Hello and welcome. I am Deji Badimasi. On June 12th, Nigeria marked a significant milestone, 25 years of uninterrupted democracy. The day, rooted in the historic events of the 1993 presidential election, symbolizes the nation's enduring quest for democratic governance and the spirit of its people. A cross-section of citizens have expressed divergent views on the gains accrued to Nigerians in the last 25 years of democratic governance. In an address on Wednesday, June the 12th, President Bola Tinubu touched on the nation's democratic journey, honored past heroes, and of course laid out his vision for Nigeria's future. The president acknowledged the economic hardships faced by Nigerians due to necessary reforms aimed at creating a more balanced and resilient economy, reducing dependence on oil revenues as, and several others. Now, while not urging Nigerians to stay committed to democracy and work uh, together towards a brighter future for the nation, Tinubu pledged to continue working towards economic democracy and ensuring that Nigeria moves forward on a path of progress and inclusiveness. Meanwhile, a group of lawmakers in the House of Representatives is championing bills to change the tenure of the president and governors to a single term of six years. The group is also proposing the rotation of the presidency between the North and the South, as well as the creation of a second vice president. To be candid, these proposals are part, I should say, the proposals now are part of uh, a six constitution of six constitutional alteration bills now introduced by the lawmakers on the floor of the house and i must say the proposals are nothing new at all in fact if you ask me it's become more like a sing song it comes up every time the issue of constitution amendment comes up but speaking on behalf of the group of lawmakers now uh, who call themselves the reformers, Ikenga Ogochinya of the People's Democratic Party said the proposed alterations aim to address agitations from different parts of the country, reduce the cost of governance and promote unity. Well, we've had this before. But joining me now from Abuja to discuss all of this is uh, Farouk Bibi. Farouk, who is, of course, a political analyst and uh, he joins us now on the program. Thank you very much, sir, for joining us on the program. Um, let's start off with our unbroken democracy for the past 25 years. The president did, did talk about uh, economic democracy, and I think, you know, that expression, the, the expression now is, is quite important because uh, while some people would say we may have made some, some sort of progress now with, with our political democracy, but that economically speaking, Democracy has not yielded the, the dividend, if you like, or those dividends now that, that many had expected it to, to yield. Well, I think we tend to separate this to and exaggerate on one or the other, mm. simply because of probably our lack of understanding of what democracy is, how it came into being, and what is the essence and purpose of democratic system and any other system for that matter. The essence of leadership and governance is to create welfare and good life for the people. That means there needs to be progress in the lives of the people. So where we tend to want to believe that uh, that good life would come after we have mastered the drama of democracy and the processes of democracy, who have learned to manipulate it in a manner where it would sort out itself, then automatically development uh, would follow. No. Mm. I think the focus on development and uh, uh, for any country is, to a large extent, even divorced from whether they are democratic or not. Uh, have we not seen countries that are not practicing the kind of democracy or not practicing democracy at all, making strides in the global economic uh, system? Uh, China is a good example. Russia is doing well. So I think it is well beyond that. I think what we should do is to look at our answers of being democratic mm. as an aim and a goal and objective of attaining development. If we think of it in any other way, we are just dancing the tune because some people brought democracy to us after colonialism or after or during military rule by the US and we just think that dancing the democracy song is already an achievement. But, but then you take a look at the past 25 years of, of un uninterrupted democracy in the country. What, what would be your honest assessment? Well, honestly, uh, the, the only achievement is it has not been interrupted. Uh, so we should uh, thank whoever interrupts it for 
taking away their eyes and uh, finding that they are not supposed to be democratic <laughs> and they're supposed to allow the people to find their footing. But not because that uh, there's so much achievement or celebration or de de decision by people because of the benefits of democracy to protect it or to die for it or to live with it. Uh, that has not been attained. Uh, democracy has really, uh, over time, and uh, even during the military regime, our system of governance has continuously devalued our lives, de de uh, turned us into uh, 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 destitutes, and uh, at least uh, gives us inferior and lower status in the global economic system. And uh, we have not changed that during the democratic process. We have not addressed democracy with economics in a manner where we we'll say, okay, we stand firm to say what achievements, what goals, what uh, 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 lines are we going to cross to make sure that because we are democratic, we have attained economic development. For that democracy, has really failed us. And uh, it is because we do not really understand what it really is, like I said. Uh, uh, 25 years, yes, but uh, can you say that uh, uh, the, the life of people has improved? Can we say that the electoral system has improved? We are still dependent on an electoral system where we think that it can be able to uh, uh, decide the attitude of people. And the electoral system does not decide the attitude of people. It is the, 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 the uh, political system, the political uh, players that can decide how people approach not only democracy, every aspect of governance, and how they make success out of it. We continue to go back to change rules, to change laws, thinking that things will be better just because the rules have been changed. But we do not address the attitude of people towards the democratic process. We seem to believe that it is just a matter, it's a four year jamboree, where when you have an electoral process and the judges, and the electoral officers and the security officers have had their field day, have had their fill, and uh, so uh, once they declare whatever they declare, we clap for ourselves and say that uh, we have succeeded in a democratic cycle. I think democracy is beyond that. Democracy means that on every daily basis, whatever is wrong should be addressed by citizens, by representative of citizens, and that includes coming to protest, coming to demonstrate. Uh, it's not waiting for four years, like the president always tries to tell us, that why is labor going on strike? They should wait for four years. Why is this thing happening? We should wait for four years. It is not a four-year affair. It is a daily by minute affair. And I think our electoral or our political leaders don't seem to understand that. They have not yet but, but, but matured then, despite to the point our where they feel Despite response. our missteps so far in the past 25 years, uh, w would you say at least we can see some, some level of maturing, that democracy is gradually maturing and that, look, we, we would not be fair to ourselves, of course, if we begin to compare ourselves to, say, um, countries like the United States of America, the United Kingdom, where democracy has, um, you know, actually lasted for, for, for hundreds of years. But, you know, despite our missteps, w would you say we are gradually maturing and that, you know, it's just a matter of time? Um, things would get better, I mean, in terms of the democracy that we practice. Deji, it will surprise you that uh, today, this morning, I watched on CNN uh, some s s slides uh, showing that the bulk of Republicans in the, uh, in, uh, in the United States of America, the largest percentage of Republicans do not believe that USA is a democracy or should be a democracy. If you are talking of 250 years, they say it's a republic. It's a republic, not a democracy. It's only trying to practice whatever it finds suitable for its needs locally and internationally. So if we assume that democracy is something God sent, something that was ordained, something that we opened some book sent by God to read, and then we're making a mistake. The essence of what we find in democracy, like they sell democracy to us for the purpose of finding economic footing in our lands. We should also understand that democracy is meant for our economic development. If we don't want to develop economically, we, 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 can, we, can, we can discharge this uh, through democracy. We can discharge democracy and find ways of development. What you see as maturing, actually, is just a, 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 a reclamation of a past di drama of diversity that led us to problems. What are we seeing today? If we say we have matured up to today, the National Assembly is bringing laws that wants to take us to 1963 so that we can go back to 1966 and have another civil war. 
is that maturity in democracy? What have they brought in development? The National Assembly, especially this National Assembly, this set of National Assembly, were never elected to pursue any political agenda of 2014 National Conference. They were all elected because of our economic situation. Buhari put us in the, in the, in, in, in the ditch, and we expected that a National Assembly and the government would be able to take us out. So it's diversionary to us that they sit down and every day they talk about one political drama, one political structure or the other. That is not essentially what is our problem. And that takes, that takes me to the next, that that, on and that takes me to the next question now. So, That's the is issue of... Anything. Um, uh, okay, Th this lawmakers, this group of lawmakers calling themselves the reformers who are now proposing um, a rotational presidency and a single term of uh, six years uh, for, uh, the, the pre for, for the position of the president and, and, and governor. What, what's your take on that? It's, it's nothing new. I mean, we've, we've had this before. Um, right from 2003, actually, or probably right from 1999. But, but here it is coming up again. I think uh, uh, what is happening is just a drama, probably trying to be diversionary to our real realistic economic situation. When I can't buy rice, it's a And you're telling me that my problem is let me give six-year term to somebody so that he can have the time he wants. That cannot decide that I buy rice. That a president comes and spends four years and another four years, to me, is even better because I can challenge him in the next four years. So he's challenged to work. Most of the people go to the governors and see. When you see governors who have no political ambition beyond being governors, they take away everything and do nothing. And nothing happens. Mm. But when you come to ambition, ambition for a term in office in a democratic system is a very key fundamental uh, uh, requirement for you to get good governance. Because the person needs to bring back himself to be assessed. assessed. Even though our assessment now is done through legal jargons and uh, 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 judicial processes and uh, security manipulations, but at least they fear that thing. Mm. They work for that thing. They try to work on creating a situation where they can still come back. I don't understand why legislature will not be facing our economic situation. I'll be going back to that drama simply because there is an insinuation that when you give six years, every other zone can be able to quickly get their turn and be able to do it, share the resources among their people. It doesn't even happen. It's just creating a clique of people that steal everything together with their friends from all over the zones and nothing happens. So what is the essence of saying you want six years old? Or, or I think these legislators are de de derailed de 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 and, and I think politically deranged. And, and I, I have to get your take also on, um, you know, some of the lawmakers pushing for the creation of more states. The creation of more states will never end. That is, is a, is an end infinitum. Uh, uh, if you begin to divide, you go back to your, probably your large, like, site, your large tribal group mm -hmm. from the Yoruba, you will continue to divide until you come to uh, Badamasi House. Even within the Badamasi House, you will continue to divide. And that division becomes more essential when there is no economic progress. So the answer is find economic progress. And people will not be looking for ethnic cleavages or ancestral issues to decide that that is the way to develop. And that's the way to get economic uh, uh, development. That it's, it's, uh, the states as we have, 36, with our land landmass, with our population, mm. with their everything, are enough. In fact, more than enough as far as I'm concerned. If you apply the resources of this country diligently to the country and the states, use it very well. I do not see why somebody is agitating for a state. Just because we are like during the, uh, not military, during the colonial times, mm. we, had, we, we became experts in window shopping for opportunities and therefore de de deriding and, and, and disowning our constitutions, our decisions and everything. When you are not in the game, you go back and your opposition is not to make the, those in the game get better. What your opposition is to say, destroy everything. You don't believe in the constitution. Senior advocates of Nigeria going to court and making money in the constitution will come back to the media and tell you they do not accept, they do not believe the constitution. I think we are some kind of mm. people. I don't understand. The opportunism in us is too much. And that is not what we should do. Development can come if you have a focused leadership that decides on development. It is not about divisions of uh, creation of ethnic privileges for states or structures or, or anything. Yes, we have a peculiar situation where we have so many uh, uh, ethnic groups, so many uh, 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 tribes and so on, more than 
a lot of places. But I think we have given enough enough division for tribal groups, for, for, for ethnic groups, for other uh, sentiments to find place to ventilate with the four, 774 local governments if mm. they are working. Mm. What, what do you need a state for? With the 36 states if they are working, why must you be a player in a state for development when development is in your ward? Why must you decide that it is only when your ethnic group holds the governorship that you can ever see development? If development is automatically coming to you without you asking for it. So I think the all essence is we are not growing, we are not developing, we are misleading ourselves. And we think that when we adopt some, uh, 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 so, 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 some structural or whatever drama and dogma around mm -hmm. and decide to play with it and uh, dis discard our nationalism, our destroy our unity and, and so on, we can find avenues to develop. No, we are, I think we are, we are heading the wrong way. We're heading the wrong way. Just before I let you go, because you, 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 you alluded to local governments now working. Um, I just have to ask you this. Um, you know the issue of local government uh, autonomy is, is a burning issue as we speak. The president uh, is pushing for it. We have, um, you know, even in the Senate, lawmakers are actually pushing for it. Um, do, you think this is, do you think this is very crucial and could make a difference? in terms of development now getting to the local level and the local people? I think our, our, our frustration with development can easily be related to our inability to fund our local governments to provide development at the local level, monitor and make sure that that kind of development happens. Uh, some local governments are as good as every other state, better than even some countries. You give them the normal natural resources they require. But I think sometimes after 1999, 2001, 2000, 2000, 2001, I think our country was sabotaged by a group of governors, they know themselves, who went to the Supreme Court to ask for interpretation. And then we also look at those judges in the Supreme Court, who she ought to know that as at that time, mm. what Nigerians were talking about in the 1999 Constitution was not handing over local governments to our lords and emperors to decide what to do with their resources. But they gave them that opportunity. And for almost 20 more years now, we are suffering from it. And they are, they are, they are finding it difficult to let their hands off those resources that they get, that they don't account for, that they mis, 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 misapply. Even against the provisions of the Constitution, they run local governments that are not democratic. And I think if we are in the same society, would not accept this. If we were in an insane society, we would shoot some people. That's what I believe, because they have become an impediment to our development and progress, and uh, I think it is not forgivable that they should be doing that and continue to do that. But as far as going to court is concerned, well, I hope they change something, but I, I think it is also diversionary. Those uh, uh, judges that made a Supreme Court uh, uh, provision uh, and uh, the changes that still happened, why uh, Buhari, with all the support he could garner at a time he could garner the support, would not seek for constitutional amendment. Why would constitutional amendment uh, 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 fail? And then we now end, end up with the with 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 a with a federal government going to court. I think uh, what the federal government needs to is to provide a clear constitutional amendment that is clearly stated the powers of local government of their creation, of their democratic processes, of their uh, financing on their development projects and everything. Let it be clearly set so that those who go to the local government do not go there as boys to mm -hmm. governors or errand boys to, to, to other political leaders. Farouk Bibi Farouk, thank you very much, sir, for coming on the program and thank you for your thoughts. You are welcome, DG. Welcome. I appreciate it. We'll take a short break and we'll be right back. Stay with us. Don't go away. Opinions are free. Facts are sacred. The truth is universal. How in practical terms can we, for instance, de-escalate the tension? Because when you go into public office, you must be ready to answer to the people. We know where the enemy is. Three places. Um, the Lake Chad Basin, the border area between Nigeria and Cameroon, and then the Sambisa Forest. On Digi360, we give you a complete dose of everything. Opinion facts and undiluted truths. I hardly believe what politicians say in this uh, part of the world. A new Nigeria is possible, a future is possible. It's the 
We delve into the issues, dissect it so that you can understand it, use it to take action. I don't think there's any need for go any governor to look for grant for ranching. Digi360, dissecting the issues.